So let's take a look at this process of quantizing audio. Um, quantizing audio is fantastic in Pro Tools. It typically works very well if we have the right stuff. And what I mean by that is um, things that are more rhythmic are really great in terms of quantizing. Uh, sometimes things that are not are very more a lot more difficult. So like vocals can be very difficult in terms of quantizing in Pro Tools, and a lot of times it's just better to do manual edits for. Um, you know, but a lot of rhythmic stuff, uh, but even guitar uh, and, you know, sometimes other instruments that have a little bit more strength in the attack that's visible that can work with us is fantastic. So quantizing, of course, is the process of locking the rhythms to the bar beat grid. Uh, so there isn't really any looseness to it. And a lot of times what I like to do, and I think it's very important, is, is you have to tailor your quantizing to the performance. Um, but it's it's better that if you're going to tighten to not do it in the post after everything's recorded. Uh, you need to do it in, in layers. And what I mean by that is when you're doing drum day or even drums and bass day, after you're done with drums and bass day of recording, you got to work through the editing for time process before you start adding other things. Because the trickle effect from the rhythm section on of just being loose makes it so that by the time you get to tracking the last few things, everything's really loose. And if you try to go back and quantize it, uh, it's just a nightmare in terms of timing because it's not just one or two issues or, or that thing where you look at it and go, oh yeah, well that musician was just typically ahead or, slight, or typically behind, but relatively in time. Instead, you'll see that they're trying to fluctuate towards it towards and away from each other and then it's just a mess of being early and being late because they're all just trying to land in the same spots so get the rhythm section nice and tight before you move on to everybody else i think that's a big key uh, but as we do this and look at it there's a couple steps to really making this work um, and you know to kind of talk about it uh, we have to activate first we have to activate a uh, warp mode in the edit window for these tracks. And so I'm working with drums. I'm going to use the rhythmic mode. It's essentially best suited to uh, figure out the timing of, of rhythmic content. And the other thing is, is the drums are already grouped. So I have them in a grouping. So they'll all do all their work together. A lot of times these are MIDI drums that were just printed to audio. But even with this, but definitely with live drums, the timing has to stay together. Whatever they do, they need to do it as a group. So to make it simple, um, typically you do want them chopped at some point in time on the grid. And what I mean by that is uh, this, the starting point for them typically needs to be chopped in a way where like it starts on somewhere in the grid. This, in this one, I have it on a 16th note before. Uh, we don't want to start it right on the bar because we need a little bit of grace room before. Um, but what we should be able to do is listen to the performance. You'll see where it's a little bit loose. And you can definitely see it if we go to 16th note and you look down the lane. And then what we're going to do is we're going to quantize it so we can kind of look at the before and after and how that all works. And uh, I was drumming on this, of course. It's, it's, it's definitely murky. So let's take a listen. Okay, so we can hear some of those issues. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna highlight these. I'm gonna switch it to a uh, 16th note and then go ahead and hit apply. Now, I've already chosen my um, Elastic Audio uh, plugin setting here or mode. And as long as I have that, it'll give me the option to do this. So this is under event, event operations, quantize, and you're gonna see it pop up immediately with this thing that says Elastic Audio events. Great, that's what we want. And then we can hit apply. Now, one thing I suggest, I'm only doing a few bars here. It's not gonna affect a whole lot in a major way, but when I typically do drums, I almost always do it in small sections. And what I mean by that is, is eight to 16 bar phrases. And I, and I take time to look at the visual to make sure that, you know, whatever's happening rhythmically is gonna work with quantization. There seems to be something here that might need to be adjusted in some other way. So we'll take a listen to it. Uh, let's try this from the top now.
Okay, so in the red, it's showing us areas that actually are not okay because of how they were stretched. Uh, it just means that the sample uh, is not technically fulfilling its requirement of uh, being a sample over 44.1K because it was stretched too far. We can fix that stretching by stretching it back. Um, but let's take a look at quantizing it at eighth note instead of 16th and see how it fares. And take a listen. Okay, it's close. Um, there's some things about it that aren't great. <laughs> Obviously, the fill at the very front end is not working. And so, again, this is one of those moments where, you know, some of the easy fixes are just undoing the quantization and doing it in just sections. And I can see clearly there's a part of the reason why is that some of these hits here aren't really doing their job. And so a manual edit here might actually be better instead of just jumping into quantize and, and maybe that fill should just be something shorter. You know, and maybe it should just copy paste this to the front end here, find that downbeat. Or it could just be as simple as that. Great. You know, and so we have to just kind of define that. I mean, I think if I was editing this for just a song in general, that's like the first question I'd ask is like, does that feel work? Because if it doesn't, I'm not going to edit it for time, right? Uh, and so if we just chopped it off, that's going to that's gonna be a major fix for us. And it's like, okay, we're ready to go. I mean, even starting on the downbeat. Now, I can also see that there's an issue right around here. And so some of the stuff in some of these bars are just not lining up exactly where they should be. And you can see them here. So I see the grid, there's the grid, and then there's these beats here. Part of the reason why is because when we lock these together and we measure them together, when they're quantized together, um, they're looking across everybody who's doing what, and it's moving towards the hat. What I'm going to do is hit Command E. I'm going to double click this again. I'm going to shift it to 16th and just see if we get any different result. And immediately we see some shifting, but not a lot. So let's let's listen to just that phrase. Now we can, most of the issue here is the hat, you know? And so sometimes <clears throat> there's a couple things we can do with this. Um, we're kind of stuck in some, to some degree, uh, where maybe a copy paste of just a better phrase is, is easier. But if we really want to go deep into it, if we go to the track view selector, switch to warp, this is actually going to show us what is being adjusted, who and where and what, okay? So if we listen to this phrasing over here, I think it's this one right here. What we're actually allowed to do is we could drag the this last hit here to be tighter to the downbeat over here. And so we can do it in slip mode if we want to just kind of slide it overall. Uh, I think because it's at the end of the phrase, it's somewhat problematic. So I think we need to drop a new, I'm going to hold control, drop a new, uh, marker there and then slide it and close this gap. Now notice by doing this I'm actually making the the tail end of that uh, that last release smaller. So it's gonna it's gonna feel like that tail end maybe goes faster, but let's listen to that transition real quick. It's not terrible. You actually notice this the hi-hat is way tighter than what it was. Now, obviously, we can't go all the way in because we'd miss that full beat, so we want to be somewhat close. The good news, the good news is, is that it, it, is, it feels a little bit more like a realistic performance because it's not perfect. 
Uh, but at the same time, the beat that follows is like also off, so that makes it suck. <laughs> so notice it's the same issue here. It's the same issue here where we're like, oh man, the gap is just not close enough. And that's where we get to kind of come in and make some of these moves. That's why this, this piece of it is just fantastic. Now, of course, I was working MIDI drums. So I could quantize MIDI first. But if I, the reason I was bringing this example in is to show like what you would do with a live drummer. Once you're out of the studio and you're working the post, you have to make decisions based upon timing as to what you can possibly do with it. Sometimes it's a copy paste of just a previous phrase that feels and sounds better, but when you have to make a, a real edit to it, you know, sometimes after quantizing or adjusting, you're gonna have to get in and make that warp mode move. And then you can kick back to the waveform. You know, you can print it this way. Uh, you can either bounce it or as soon as you go back and disengage, the warp mode here uh sorry right here and say none it's going to say oh do you want to commit to this and print it or do you want to revert back to what it was you know if you hit commit it's literally just going to print you'll see it cycling up at the top and it'll come back and rewrite this as if it didn't have warp markers on it and now it's ready to go you can export it move it around cut it up just like normal and then you don't have all that processing happening behind the scenes and that's quantizing audio.